Hi there. Um, I wanted to finish taking a look at factoring with you, and some of you had already looked at the first video, which covered factoring when we have two terms. We looked before at a difference of squares, a difference of cubes, and a sum of cubes. Here we want to finish out <coughs> looking at factoring with three terms, which is going to lead naturally into factoring with four terms. So here we have a trinomial, and I want you to think about what we should be doing when we factor a trinomial. Um, notice that this first example doesn't have a coefficient that's listed in front of x squared. We, we know then that the coefficient is there, but it's a 1, so it's not really going to be very hard to work with. Um, I want you to notice that your back term is just a 6. Now, if we're doing guess, check, and revise, which is the first method most folks learn, take your x and you break it up into x, you take your x squared and break it up into x and x. Now I take a look at the back, and the next thing I tell my students to watch for is the sign right here. If it's positive, that means that the signs inside the parentheses will match. It does not mean that the signs will both be positive. This being positive just tells me that whatever was here and here, when I multiply them together, I get a positive sign. Now for that to be true, I could do that with a positive times a positive, or couldn't I do a negative times a negative to get that same result? So what I tell my students is first we look here and we can see that it's plus. That tells me that I have a match in the signs. Then I want your eyes to go right to here and look at what you got. It was a plus, right? So that tells me I can stick with plus and plus. Next, because I just had a coefficient of 1 here, doesn't make my factoring very complicated, I'm going to take a look at my constant term at the back. I had a 6, so I'm going to list all the different ways I could get a 6 by multiplying two numbers together. That would be 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and I won't worry about, about relisting the different orders of that. Um, if I try these, 1 and 6, for example, if you're so new at this that you're not really sure what to guess, we can put anything in there we want. We think this is it, but we need to check it. So we've guessed, we're going to check, and we'll revise if we need to. I'll go x plus 1 times x plus 6. Now that gets me what? When I FOIL, I get x squared plus x times 6 plus 1 times x plus 1 times 6. So this gets me x squared plus 7x plus 6. And while I'm mostly right, my middle term is not quite there. So I need to stop and think, okay, <clears throat> what's another way I could do this? Sometimes changing the order will help, but because there wasn't anything in front of the x's, that's not going to make a big difference here. I've gotten it wrong. That means that these don't work. And I'm going to go ahead and revise my guess. Instead of 1 and 6, the only other options I have here would be 2 and 3. So I'm going to say 2 and 3, and we'll see if that works better. So I'll FOIL x plus 2 times x plus 3. It's really just the distributive property, so I'm taking x times the first term, x times the second term, 2 times the first term, 2 times the second term. When I simplify the middle to common uh, like terms in the middle, I'm going to get x squared plus 5x plus 6, which indeed matches where we came from. That tells us that the proper factorization here is, in fact, x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now, I want to look at a handful of these with you to give you a sense of how this develops. I would say this is one of our first and easiest ones. But we want to look at something else with a slightly different characteristic or two. So follow me here as we go x squared minus 4x minus 5. Once again, it's a trinomial, so we're going to go towards binomial times binomial. Once again, I've given you one that doesn't have a leading uh, a coefficient on the leading term. And here's what I want you to notice. I'm going to load in my x and my x. But this time, as we look right here, it's a negative. Because it's a negative in the back term, what that means is that the signs I lay in here won't, I mean they can't, match. So without even thinking twice, I go ahead and load up my, my signs. If they're in the wrong place, no big deal. We'll just move them later. Um, I want you to think about what we've got going on. No coefficient up front. I'm going to take my 5, and I'm going to list, well, it's prime. I'm going to list all the ways I can get 5. Well, there you go. That's all you get. Now, this still has some thinking and some uh, checking that we need to do. For example, if I go ahead and I put them in, 5 and 1, I think this is it, but I have to check to see if I'm right. I go x plus 5, x minus 1. Checking it, distribute here, I get x squared, multiply here, minus x. Multiply here, 5x, multiply here, minus 5. 
We're on the right track, but I want you to notice that combining our like terms gives me a positive 4x where, in fact, I wanted a negative 4x. You see that that doesn't match exactly. It's a really quick, simple, easy fix. All you have to do is change this to the opposite sign. Oh, I have the green marker with nothing in it. <laughs> and change this to its opposite sign. Now, to check that, I'm going to say, okay, x times x, x times 1, negative 5 times x, negative 5 times positive 1. Combining these like terms in the middle, I get x squared minus 4x minus 5. That indeed matches where I came from, so the proper factorization would be an x minus the 5 times the x plus 1. Remember to check your work, because even if you think you've landed it, Sometimes we're tired or stressed and we don't come out in the right place. Okay, so let's take a look at a slightly harder one. So I've got 3x squared minus x minus 2. Three, three terms are listed here, so once again we're um, factoring into binomial times binomial. And we want now to look, now look, my x's will go here and here. This is a coefficient in front of your x squared, and we have to break that into its factors. I gave you a nice one because this one's not a composite coefficient. Um, it's just a prime coefficient. So I'm going to go ahead and say 3x and 1x. Now, um, just like we did before, I want your eyes to look here next. So that's going to tell you whether your signs match or they don't. Do you remember? It's negative. So signs don't match. A lot of students fret and wring their hands over where those signs go. I just go ahead and put them in there and we'll check them when we need to. We'll switch them. If we don't need to, we'll leave them alone. Um, I want you to look at the back side. Now the back side is a 2, and so the 2's factors would go here and here. Now with a 2, you can only do 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. Um, we're going to have to do a little bit of guessing here see if we can land things in the right place. If I go 1 and 2, I'm going to guess and see if this is right. And if it's not, I'm going to change some things around. So let's check it. 3x minus 1, x plus 2. When I multiply, I get 3x squared, 6x minus 1x minus 2. Now these two together, get me 5x in the middle. It's not what I wanted. I mean, the front matches and the back matches, and quite often that'll happen, but if the middle doesn't match, then I have to make some changes. Um, it's not just that the sign is wrong, it's that the actual number's wrong. And so instead of going with 1 and 2, what I want to do is I want to swap that out, and I'm going to say 2 and 1. And you might think, oh, can that make that big of a difference? Yep. So we're going to check that. We're going to say 3x minus 2 and x plus 1. When I do that, I get 3x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 2. So look what I've got. 3x squared. These like terms get me 1x. And I've got a minus 2. Now, this is still wrong. You notice that this is, the, is not matching up to the original trinomial, but the only thing wrong is the sign in the middle. Um, front term and back term both match. So the quick and easy fix is to go back in, change the signs to be the opposite of whatever they are. So I'm going to make this positive, make this one negative. And in checking that, 3x plus 2 and x minus 1, I get 3x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 2. These two terms together now do, in fact, give me the negative 1x I needed. So I've got 3x squared minus 1x minus 2. That means I've fa I factored this correctly. I've got 3x plus 2 times x minus 1. <coughs> um, if you're getting tired of the guessing, the checking, and revising, it's kind of a good thing because I'm trying to show you that you might want a different methodology. We could have done this really nicely without ever guessing, checking, or revising. I want to show you the AC method. So the AC method 
presumes that you know this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. For the AC method, what we're looking to see is put this back, how we can get the factorization without ever having to guess. And this will land it quite nicely for us. To do the AC method, you have to identify little a, little b, and little c. Little a is the coefficient of x squared, so the number part in front. Little b is the number in front of x, and c is the constant at the back side. So for this problem, I can see that a, little a, is 3, b, little b, is negative 1, and c is negative 2. And that's all really important, because for AC method to work, you need to do what it says. A times C. And what was A? 3. What was C? Negative 2. When you multiply those, you get negative 6. Now that's important. We're going to circle that. In an organized way, what I want you to do is 1 times what gets you 6. 2 times what gets you 6. 3 times what? Oh, hold on. Do you see that 3 is already on my list? You don't need to do that anymore. Somewhere in this box is a pair of numbers which should combine to get me the letter B. Here's the trick though. In order for these to combine to get me a, the letter B, I need to use whatever sign is out front. You see how it looks like a minus sign? So I'm going to subtract the two numbers to get B. Now in, in this case, B was a negative 1. So I'm going to use the 2 and the 3 because I can go 2 minus 3, and that'll get me a negative 1. So I want to use these two, and what, what I end up doing is I end up completely rearranging the middle bits of this. You keep your 3x squared and your minus 2. But instead of saying negative x, I'm going to use these numbers, the 2 and the 3, as two new coefficients. Watch. I'm going to say plus 2x minus 3x. And may I point out that these two together still combine for a total that's the same as the original middle term. They have to. But I've used these two, the two and the three, in order to write it this way. And what's cool about this is all your guesswork is done. From here, we do four-term factoring, which is called factoring by grouping. Here's what I want you looking at. First two terms. What's common to both of those? Um, there's not a number part. There's no coefficient factor that um, comes out of both of those. But do you see that they both have x's? So I'll pull that out, and that leaves me 3x plus 2. When I distribute that back in, doesn't it give me 3x squared plus 2x? So that's good. I want you to notice what's common to both of these two. They're both negative, so I'm going to plot a negative sign, and that's going to leave me 3x plus 2. Now, I always call this the beautiful thing. Do you notice how this and this now match each other? Well, if they match each other, that means that this is a factor of this first larger component. This is a factor of the second larger component. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that beautiful matching component, 3x plus 2 and 3x plus 2. We're going to factor that all the way out front. We're going to pull it out of both of these terms and write it just once as 3x plus 2 times whatever is left over. Now, guys, once these are gone, once they've been pulled out, what's left over? Well, just an x minus 1. This is the same solution we got with guess, guess, check, and revise. But for a lot of students who think, oh, I'm going to be guessing for a long time, I don't like not knowing, this didn't require any guessing. We were able to run the process and get to our answer pretty quickly. I want to give you a few more examples of this. So obviously this was a pretty simple example to start off with. And I could sit and listen to good arguments on both sides. Oh no, I'm just going to guess, check, and revise, or oh no, I want to have something like the AC method. Let's take a look at another one. Um, this time let's do 6x squared minus 11x plus 4. We want to identify a, b, and c. So I'd have 6, negative 11, and 4. For this problem, I need to determine AC. Well, wouldn't that be 6 times 4? Or 24. Circle that. That's a pretty important number. Now what I need to do, and notice by the way that it's a positive. That's important to know. I want to list all the ways I can get 24. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 6, oh, let's go in the right order. 
It's important to not skip over anything. You could miss something that you needed to see. So one worked, two worked, three worked, four worked, five does not work. Once I get to six, it's already on the list. So I usually box this set somewhere inside of there. I'm looking for numbers that add up to little old B. Now B was what? It was 11. Not worrying about the sign right now as we do this. Um, these add up to 25. These add to 14. Oh, there it is. Those add up to 11. So I'm going to use the 3 and an 8 to make a 3x and an 8x. So look, keep the first term. 6x squared. I'm going to say minus 3x and minus 8x, and then keep my last term. These two don't change. It's just that the negative 11x is created from the negative 3x and the negative 8x. That's the hardest part of this process, is just the setup. And now, factoring by grouping should work really nicely. If I just look in the first two terms, and I ask, okay, well, what's common to both of those? We can see a 3 is common and an x. So I'm going to say 3x comes out, leaving me a 2x minus 1. Now check yourself. Make sure that this works. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times negative 1 is minus 3x. Now, what comes out of the back? I can pull a 2, but I want you to pull the biggest possible thing. Pull out a 4. And you'll notice that I'm also pulling out a negative. We want this to end up positive right here where my finger is. So, negative 4 times 2x, negative 4 times negative 1, in order to get this back to a positive. And look, do you see that beautiful thing that showed up? Common uh, factor for both the big front and the big back is 2x minus 1. And I want you to pull the 2x minus 1 all the way out front. If these both get pulled out front, what's left over? 3x minus 4. You could do this problem with guess, check, and revise. It's going to take a lot longer because 6 has a lot of different factors um, and ways you can do it. We've got 1 and 6 or 2 and 3, and then 4 has got 1 and 4 or 2 and 2, and the combinations within the parentheses could get pretty monotonous if you're checking them all. You want to do one more problem. And let's look at 6x squared minus 17x minus 14. And on this one, you should say, oh, hang on. If I'm going to factor this by grouping, can you see that you've got to go 1x and 6x, or 2x and 3x, or maybe a different order of those? And then for 14, it might be 1 and 14, 2 and 7, or the reverse of those. I don't think this looks very nice as a guess, check, and revise problem. Here's my A. Here's my B, here's my C. Okay. So for AC method, I go 6 times negative 14, and what is that? 60 plus 24, so I get 84. Careful though, it's a negative 84. That's important to remember. That's a pretty important number. So I want you to come up with a listing of all the different numbers that you can multiply together to get 84. Go in an organized way. Do 1 and 84. 2 and 42. 3 goes in. If you check it with your calculator, it's going to be 3 times 28, because that's 60 and 24. Yep. Um, 4 works times 21. 5 does not work, but we want to mark it and then cross it off. 6. Oh, 6 does work. 6 goes in 14 times, because you get 60 plus 24. Yep. 7 works, because it goes 7 times 12. 8 does not work. 9 doesn't work. 10 and 11 also fail. Once I get to 12, I'm not going to keep going, because you've already got 12 on the board. So, somewhere in this box, I'm going to need to find a pair of numbers. Now, look, look. See that? That tells us you need a pair of numbers that subtract to get you B. B in this case was 17. So which two numbers, those subtract to get you 83, these subtract to get you 40, these subtract to get you 25. Oh my gosh, there it is. If you subtract these, don't you get 17? So I'm going to keep 6x squared. I'm going to keep my negative 14. I'm going to use these to create a negative 17. Now that's going to be negative 21x plus 4x. Together they give me a negative uh, 17x. 
Now, from here, let's just do factoring by grouping. So this is our four-term factoring mixed in with the AC method. Um, what can nicely come out of both of those? Um, oh, a 3 and an x. Now, 3x times what would get you 6x squared? Wouldn't that be a 2x? 3x times what would get you a negative 21? That would have to be a minus 7. If you push that back in but by the distributive, you'd have um, negative 21x. Now look at the next two terms. This is classic factoring by grouping in four terms. You see that a 2 exists in both of those? So I'm going to say plus 2. You've got to put the plus there. And 2 times what would be 2x, so that I have a 4x. 2 times what to get negative 14, so negative 7. You should notice this nice thing matching up again because it matches and it exists in the first and the back part. I'm going to push it all the way up front. Call it 2x minus 7 times whatever's left over, which is 3x plus 2. You could have guessed and checked at this a really long time, but this is, I think, a nicer way to come at it. Um, we're not going to cover separately factoring by grouping in four terms because this is literally what will happen. You'll have problems that are four terms just like this in red. And when it's factoring by grouping, for the larger part of the problems you do, you literally just box off the first two terms, pull out what's common, box off the second two terms, pull out what's common, and then take that common factor, the thing I call the beautiful thing, push it all the way out front, which will leave you just the leftovers like we had with 3x plus 2. Occasionally, in four-term factoring, uh, the middle two terms will be out of order. So if you try to do this and it's supposed to work and it won't, my tip is switch the order of those middle two terms. It should work. Okay. I sure hope this helps. If you have more questions, send me an email. Have a good day.